Hello everybody, I'm Aaron Norris. It's Friday, October 5th, and this is the Norris Group's Real Estate Headline Roundup in two. First up with the national numbers, CoreLogic says home prices posted their strongest gain from last year at 4.6%, another being closed in Illinois, bringing the total to 43 in 2012. HUD announced housing starts increased 2.3% last month. LPS reported foreclosures still remain high at 6.49% for judicial states and 2.28% for non-judicial states. The jobless rate is now at 7.8%, breaking the much politicized 8% level. It's the lowest level in three and a half years, and the private sector is what made up the majority of the gains. J.P. Morgan Chase and two of its financial firms, Bear Stearns and EMC Mortgage Corp., are up against New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. The lawsuit claims both of the firms under J.P. Morgan underwrote, securitized, and packaged $87 billion in residential mortgage-backed securities without looking at the risks tied to the loans. Schneiderman claimed $22.5 billion in losses were created by the firms. The Cogsville Group has bulk purchased 94 Fannie Mae properties worth roughly $13.7 million as part of FHFA's bulk REO pilot program. All are sold near or above market value, and Cogsville joins Pacifica companies who purchased 699 properties in Florida back in September. Waypoint has secured an additional $247 million loan from Citigroup to continue its bulk buying proclivities for its REO to rental program. This comes just weeks after the announcements of a $65 million loan from Citi. Somebody must be doing something, right? If you've got a second lien from B of A, keep an eye on your mailbox. Bank of America just sent out 150,000 letters to pre-qualified homeowners telling them they could have their second lien mortgages serviced by the bank done away with completely. The forgiveness program helps lower overall debt levels but doesn't solve issues if the borrower isn't paying on the first. Sorry. Taxes are set to increase in a few areas if Congress doesn't act. In January, taxes could increase by an average of $3,500. 88% of all households would experience some form of tax increase, but would mean an additional $536 billion in government revenues. If you want to learn more about what those tax increases could mean, you can check out our Cutting Edge Financial Tactics Brunch on October 27th in Riverside um, at the lovely Mission Inn and Spa. That's it for the headlines today, but there are many more headlines on our blog at thenorrisgroup.com slash blog. Upon the radio show this week, we've got the final panelist uh, preparing for I Survive Real Estate. It's E.J. Burke, Mortgage Bankers Association. Check him out on the radio show on iTunes or our website. Upcoming events including the Apartment Owners Association on October 17th. Of course, we've got October 19th coming up, which is I Survive Real Estate, our fifth uh, annual event where we've raised over $320,000 so far. This year, all monies raised are going to St. Jude and Make-A-Wish. October 27th will also be our Cutting Edge Financial Tactics Brunch. If you'd like to find out more information about all five of our hard money loan programs, including buy and hold, buy and flip, and even building programs, check out thenorrisgroup.com. If you're looking to make 9% returns on some trust deeds, check out tngtrustdeeds.com. Have a fantastic weekend, and we'll see you next week.